Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, fifth graders. Whenever you are watching this video that goes along with Worksheet 10.5, which today is about the metric system. Up until now in Chapter 10, we've been talking about the U.S. customary units. And pretty much the United States is the only country in the world that uses these inches, such as gallons and feet and inches and yards. Uh, most of the world uses what's called the metric system. Now, what I'm uh, holding my uh, video camera up to now is a basic diagram of how the metric system works. Uh, on Google Classroom, I posted uh, an image of this same chart. You are going to want to have that printed out. You are going to want to have... Uh, it up on your screen, something to refer to, okay? The metric system, you're gonna wanna see this and you're gonna wanna understand that the metric system is a base 10 system. Now you may wanna add something like this uh, onto your sheet, uh, cause the idea is that in every one of these, there's 10 and then from here to here, there's 10. 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 Okay? There's always 10 of the smaller unit to go into the next bigger unit. Now you can see that the base unit is grams, meters, and liters. Grams is basically weight or mass. Meter is a length unit, how long something is, and a liter is capacity. You may have seen two liter bottles of root beer or something like that uh, that you buy at Walmart or Meyer. So you get an idea. Liters is capacity, meters is a length unit, and grams is more of a weight or mass. So we have milligrams, we also have millimeters, we also have milliliters. We have decigrams, decimeters, deciliters. We have kilograms, kilometers, kiloliters. Okay? And each one, the smaller one, it takes 10 to make the other one. So let's say, for example, let's go with length, just to show for an example. Let's imagine that I have a millimeter. It would take 10 millimeters to make one centimeter but it would take 10 centimeters to make one decimeter. It would take one decimeter to make one meter. It would take 10 meters to make one decameter. It would take 10 decameters to make one hectometer. And it would make take 10 hectometers to make one kilometer, all right? or kilometer, as some might say, but most people say kilometers. The pronunciation gets a little different. So, have this sheet printed out, screenshot this, copy it down, do something. But this, this sheet right here, I took an image of it, scanned it into Google Classroom, uh, uploaded it there, so it is there for you to have uh, at your uh, disposal when you are ready. So, as we have been doing throughout chapter 10, one of the main things we're going to be doing is converting. Now, let's say, for example, okay, I have 16 meters, and I need to figure out how many millimeters that is. 16 meters equals blank millimeters. So... I'm looking here and I'm like, well, okay, uh, what am I going to do? So I'm going to go to my chart and I'm going to think about meters and millimeters. Well, so I go over to my chart. Here is meters. Here's millimeters. I'm starting at meters and I'm going down to millimeters. So my rule stays the same. If my unit is getting smaller, my number is getting bigger so I'm going to multiply, okay? If I'm going the opposite direction and my unit is going from uh, 
Let's say I was going the opposite direction from millimeters to meters, my unit would be getting bigger, which means my number would be getting smaller, which means I would divide. We've been going over that concept throughout chapter 10. But in number one here, I'm going from meters to millimeters. So my unit is getting smaller. This is the small side. This is the big side. My unit is getting smaller. So my number is getting bigger. So I'm multiplying. Well, I have 16 meters. So the first number in my multiplication problem is going to be 16. But what am I going to multiply 16 by? Well, let's figure it out. We've already said that the metric system is a base 10 system, which means there's always 10 of something to make something else. So it takes 10 millimeters to make one centimeter, 10 centimeters to make one decimeter, 10 decimeters to make one meter. So I'm going down, and so I'm, I'm having to figure out how much I'm, it's going from meters to millimeters. Well, when I jump down one, that's 10. When I jump down two, that's 10 times 10, which is 100. When I jump down another one, it's 100 times 10, which is 1,000. So I'm actually doing 16 times 1,000. Well, 16 times 1,000, that's not too hard. I can handle that as a fifth grader. 16 times 1 is 16. And I'm going to add my three zeros onto the end. 16 meters equals 16,000 millimeters. Let's look at uh, another one. Let's say, okay, I've got 300 centiliters. And I want to figure out how many liters that is. All right. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to be like, well, okay. I have centiliters. So that's right here. Liters is right here. That's my base unit. Centiliters is right here. Now, according to my problem, I'm going from centiliters to liters. So going from centiliters to liters, I'm going from here to here, which means my unit is getting bigger. My unit is getting bigger, so my number is getting smaller, so I'm going to divide. Question is now I have to figure out what the division problem is. So I see 300 here. That's going to be the first number in my division problem. It's going to be 300 divided by something. Well, 300 divided by what? Okay. Um, 300 divided by what? So I'm going from centiliters to liters. From here to here, that's 10. And from here to here is 10 times 10. Not 10 plus 10, 10 times 10, which is 100. So I'm going to take 300 divided by 100. Okay? 300 divided by 100. I'm going to do 3 divided by 1. That's 3. And when I divide, I cancel zeros out. I cancel one zero out here, one zero out here, one zero out here, one zero out here, and I keep canceling out one zero on every side until I have one side that has zeros left and one side doesn't or all my zeros are crossed off. Here all my zeros are crossed off, so my final answer is three. All right, let's uh, look at one more. Let's uh, maybe a couple more. Let's um, go with, I don't know, let's go with, let's say that I have, uh, I don't know, we're going to say I've got 200 decagrams, okay, we're gonna, let's just do this, 200 decagrams. And I want to figure out how many kilograms that is. So I'm going to have decagrams going to kilograms. Well, so I go to my chart and I see, oh, well, I've got decagrams here. I've got kilograms here. So I'm going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit. My unit is getting bigger, which means my number is going to get smaller. Okay, my, once again, 
My unit is getting bigger, so my number is going to get smaller. Okay? So I know since my number is getting smaller, it's going to be a division problem. Well, what's the first number in my division problem going to be? Well, I see here I've got 200 decagrams. So my first number is 200. Okay? So, um, I'm dividing by 200. Well, I'm starting with 200, and i got to now figure out what I'm dividing by. So I come back over here to my decagrams, and I'm thinking, okay, from here to here is 10, and from here to here is 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm dividing by 100. 200 divided by 100, well, 2 divided by 1 is 2. Cross 1 zero off here, 1 zero off here, 1 zero off here, 1 zero off here. There's no zeros left either place, so no zeros are part of my answer. 200 decagrams equals 2 kilograms. Now, all right, let's say, for example, let's do one more, and let's say, okay, let's say that I have 30,000 uh, I don't know. I have 30,000 liters. 30,000 liters, and I want to turn that into how many milliliters, okay? I have 30,000 liters, and I want to turn that into milliliters. So I'm going to go to my chart. And I'm going to think, okay, well, here's liters. I've got 30,000 liters, and I'm turning those liters into milliliters because that's what my problem says. I'm going from liters to milliliters. So I'm going on my chart from here to here. So on my chart, I'm going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit. Okay? I'm going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit. And when my unit that I'm measuring with gets smaller, my number is going to get bigger, which means I'm going to multiply. But what am I going to multiply by? Well, let's see. Liter is my base unit. So going from here to here, that's 10. From here to here, that's 10 times 10, which is 100. And then going from here to here is 100 times 10, which is 1,000. So I know that the first number in my multiplication problem is 30,000, but I'm multiplying that now by 1,000, okay? It's going to be a big number. I can just use my zeros trick, though, fifth grade. This doesn't have to be stressful. 3 times 1 is 3. And then I just see how many zeros I have, and all those zeros need to become part of my answer when I multiply. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven. And then I put a comma at every three. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. I get 30 million milliliters. All right, 30 million milliliters is what you have when you have 30,000 liters. So that's converting, all right? Let's clear some space here now. And pardon my interruption here. Now we're going to do some comparing, okay? Now we're going to do some comparing, okay? So your second part of your directions say to compare and use the less than, greater than, or equal to sign. All right, so let's uh, say, for example, I've got 900 centimeters and I have 9,000 millimeters, all right? So just like we did when we did the U.S. customary units, I always like to multiply more which means that I always want to take the bigger unit and make it the same as the smaller unit. I personally just think that that 
works a little bit better. Then you don't end up with remainders with division and having to add decimals and zeros and all, and all that stuff. When you multiply, you can just get an answer. So I'm looking at centimeters and millimeters. So I want to go back to my chart and I want to think, well, which one is bigger? Well, I see here centimeters uh, is to the left of millimeters. This is the smallest. So centimeters is bigger. That's my bigger unit. So I want to change centimeters to be the same as millimeters. So I come back over here to my chart. My centimeters is here. My millimeters is here. Okay? So I have to think, well, what am I going to multiply by? Well, it's only one spot away. So I'm just going to multiply it by 10. When I turn my 900 centimeters into millimeters, I'm going to do 900 times 10. All right? When I do 900 times 10, 9 times 1 is 9. I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3. I find that this is 9,000 millimeters. Well, if 900 centimeters is equal to 9,000 millimeters, and over here I have 9,000 millimeters, I am finding that those two measurements, those two lengths, are equal. Now, what if I have one like this? 5,000 centimeters being compared to 5 meters. So first I want to go to my chart, and I'm like, okay, so I've got 5,000 centimeters, so centimeters is right here, and I've got meters, which is my base unit right here. So I want to turn the meters into centimeters. All right, so I'm going to multiply, but what am I going to multiply by? Well, going from meters to centimeters, from here to here, that would be 10 times, but then from here to here, that's 10 times 10, which is 100. So I have to take the number of meters and multiply it by 100 to find how many centimeters that is. So I come back to my problem and I have 5 meters. And if I have to multiply that by 100, that's not too hard. 5 times 100 would be 500. So this, I can get rid of 5 meters, and I'm going to pretend that that's 500 centimeters. Well, now I compare and I ask well, myself, well, which one is more? 5,000 centimeters or 500 centimeters? Well, that's not hard. 5,000 is definitely bigger than 500 centimeters. All right. So one of the other things that you might have to do is some problem solving. All right. Let's pick on, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's pick on Jaden today. Jaden ordered 165 centimeters of fabric, all right? And then we have Aurora ordered 1.7 meters of fabric. Who ordered 4 So, Jaden ordered 165 centimeters of fabric. Aurora ordered 1.7 meters of fabric. Who ordered more? So really, all we're doing is comparing. We want to see what's bigger. 1.7 meters or 165 centimeters. We need to see which one is bigger. Now, as always, I want to turn the bigger unit and make it the same as the smaller unit. So I go back to my chart. Here I see meters. Here I see centimeters. So meters is farther to the left because this is, remember, this is the big side of the chart. This is the smallest side of the chart. So meters is bigger than centimeters. So I'm going to have to change my 1.7 meters into centimeters. So what am I going to multiply it by? Well, meters is here. From here to here, that's times 10. Then from here to here, that's 10 times 10, which is 100. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take 1.7 and 
and I'm going to multiply that by 100. Well, remember what we're doing. We've done this before. Remember, multiplying by 100 fifth grade is just moving the decimal. I'm going to move the decimal once, twice, because there's two zeros in 100. I have this empty spot here. I fill that empty spot with a zero. 1.7 meters can be replaced by 170 centimeters. And then that's easy to compare. What's bigger, 170 centimeters or 165 centimeters? Well, 170 centimeters is definitely bigger than 165 centimeters. Now, we have one more story problem that we're going to look at. All right. We have Carson fills water bottle with 2.3 liters of water, or H2O. Okay? How much water is left after he drinks three hundred and forty milliliters. Carson fills his water bottle with 2.3 liters of H2O or water. How much water is left after he drinks 340 milliliters? So there's a lot going on here. We know that he drank 340 milliliters. Now he filled his water bottle up with 2.3 liters. We need to figure out how much water is left after he drank 340 milliliters. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take the 2.3 liters and convert that into milliliters. That's going to be the first thing we do. So I look at my chart and I see, oh, well, here's base unit. That's liter. Milliliters is way over here, the smallest. So I'm going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, which means I'm going to multiply. So the first number in my multiplication problem is going to be 2.3. Now, what am I multiplying by? Well, let's see. Going from liters to milliliters, from here to here is 10. From here to here is 10 times 10, which is 100. And from here to here is 100 times 10, which is 1,000. So it's 2.3 times 1,000. Well, remember, once again, we just talked about a couple minutes ago, when I'm multiplying by these base 10 numbers, all I'm doing is moving the decimal. There are one, two, three zeros in 1,000. So in 2.3, all I'm doing is taking the decimal and moving it once, twice, three times. I have two empty spots here, so I fill them in with zeros, and I find that 2.3 liters is the same as 2,300 milliliters. This is a concept we've done before fifth grade. We just didn't attach the metric system to it. But we, you remember when we had patterns? 2.3 times 10, 2.3 times 100, 2.3 times 1,000. That was like back in, I don't know, chapter 5 or 6 or something. But we've done that before, okay? So now he had, um, but getting off uh, topic here, uh, 2,300 milliliters now is what he filled his water bottle with. But it says he drank 340. How much is left? Well, how much left? That's all. That's just a subtraction problem. So now you just go and subtract 2,300 minus 340. Zero minus zero is zero. I can't do zero minus four, so I borrow from the three, make it a two. 10 minus four is six. Can't do two minus three, so you borrow from the two, make it a one, make that two a 12. 12 minus three is nine. One minus nothing is one. How much water is left? 1,960 milliliters. We will work on this assignment in class uh, fifth grade uh, next week, Wednesday, April the 22nd. And uh, that's the metric system. All right, we'll talk to you later.
Bye.